Fox Business Alert. That is a wrap. President Biden capping off a, a pretty busy week in Europe, meeting with G7 leaders and a highly consequential NATO summit in Madrid. The president aboard Air Force One on his way home at the moment, but he worked with world leaders earlier today to roll out new strategies to target Russia and support Ukraine. President Biden's problems at home took center stage at his end of visit press conference. Listen. Ultimately, the reason why gas prices are up is because of Russia. Russia, Russia, Russia. The reason why the food crisis exists is because of Russia. Russia not allowing grain to get out of Ukraine. But I can understand why the American people are frustrated because of inflation. But inflation is higher in almost every other country. Prices in the pump are higher in almost every other country. We're better positioned to deal with this than anyone. And while Russia's war on Ukraine rages on with no end game, the worsening global economic conditions are showing no signs of easing anytime soon. Let's bring in former Under Secretary of State for Economic Growth, Energy and the Environment, Bob Hormatz. Bob, thank you uh, for joining us. Let's just begin with, with, you know me, Bob. I don't like politics. I don't like culture wars. I like simple numbers and proof in statistics. And the proof does not hold up to what President Biden just said about oil problems and gasoline problems being Russia, Russia, Russia. Yes, of course, we have crude oil up 17 percent since uh, Russia invaded Ukraine. But crude oil prices, and we can show the chart, are up 102 percent since Joe Biden took office. That's the year to date picture. But if we stretch it out to when he took office, it's very obvious that this has been a long brewing problem. So can he really say that? Well, certainly Russia uh, has had a major impact on oil prices, both in the United States and around the world. It's, it's also true that we were seeing inflationary pressures emerge in the U.S. Uh, before that. And, and um, this, this just adds uh, to the inflationary pressures that we were having uh, on on oil, gas, and and food, but the the world point is is a very apt one, and that is, uh, if they go up in other countries around the world, it shows that there is one common denominator, and the common denominator worldwide, and and partially in the United States also is Russia, and if Russia uh, were to normalize right. its trade in oil and gas, mm -hmm. uh, oil prices and gas prices right. would go down. Well, here and elsewhere. Well, I'm not I'm not denying that Russia is a huge issue in commodities, absolutely. But can we put up our Bob gasoline? This is wholesale gasoline in the United States. Once again, up 23% since uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, but up 131% since Joe Biden took office. So again, when you look at the numbers, I'm just not sure it does him any good to blame Russia entirely here. And that said, well, here it is, up 125% since uh, January 20th of 2021, when, when Joe Biden took office. Uh, and again, the, there are many other issues, COVID and the lockdowns and the supply chain problems. But as we talk about all that's going on, he also said that, we, that there were many other countries that had worse inflation levels than we do. Well, we're second worst behind the United Kingdom when it comes to G7 countries. Mm -hmm. And he's using well, an international think, uh, stage to say these things. Yes, I, 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 I certainly would say that the numbers you have indicate that there was a big increase before that. Um, no, no question about it. The numbers are, are telling us that. Mm -hmm. I think the point he's trying to make is that if we were to get the Russians to pull out of Ukraine, it would have a positive effect on the markets and oil prices would and gas prices would go down. Oh, sure. And that, that I think is the that I think is the the point of, of what he was trying to get across. Absolutely. I, I can see that too, but when you talk about quote getting Putin to exit out of Ukraine, we've got historic sanctions piled all over Russia and over Russians and the elites, etc. The problem becomes that they have figured out a way to deal with this. The ruble just hit a seven-year high against the dollar. We haven't talked about the ruble in a while. Remember, it was collapsing. Well, they've somehow figured out how to get it back up again. Here's the year-to-date picture. So uh, can you say that the sanctions are working? 
I think the sanctions are working. The ruble is very misleading in the sense that it's up in part because oil prices are up and the Russia still exports oil and gas. Mm -hmm. The second is that um, they can't import a lot of things. They're under sanctions. And um, their balance of, uh, of trade and uh, their current account uh, surplus is, uh, is high mm -hmm. because a lot of things that they would otherwise import, they're not importing. And third, they raised um, interest rates quite dramatically. They've cut them back. Yeah. But a big part of the big spike in the, uh, in the ruble was that they had tightened uh, monetary policy very considerably, and they're trying to unwind that. So it's a combination of higher oil prices, they can't buy as much because of sanctions, and uh, tighter monetary policy. I want one quick but, answer. But their economy actually is is not doing well. A lot of companies have left. A lot of jobs have been lost. And uh, I think their economy is is not in good shape. It's, oh, it's probably, disastrous. Thanks, Putin. Yeah, it's, Great job. And, and it's um, probably one of the worst economies in, in that area. Just be, agree. And so we shouldn't look at a trade balance as an indication of, of the strength of their economy. Their economy is not good. It's bad. Bob, I need a really quick answer on this. But obviously, Finland and Sweden have now been formally uh, Take, they've taken the next step to get them into NATO. How do you expect Putin will eventually react? That Putin will react? I, I don't think there's much he can do at this point. Um, the United States has done, and NATO has done, a lot to indicate that they are going to be supportive of all their NATO partners. Okay. They're moving more troops um, into the region. They're going to increase the number of available troops to 300,000. Um, who are at the ready, and uh, Putin has his hands full with Ukraine, uh, and, he, and he's certainly not going to take on another country at this point. Well, another army that's barely able to yeah, sustain it. Yeah, that has certainly backfired in Putin's face, the NATO situation. And thank you for the mood lighting, Bob. We appreciate it, Bob Hormats.